Hi, everybody. Hi, Molly70. Hola. Um, so we're in weird times, guys. Getting weirder. I just thought I'd hop on and um, send some love to everybody. Send a bit of support. And um, just check in. Because uh, it's getting weird over here. I was in Melbourne. That was cancelled. I just got off a flight. I'm in Los Angeles. Um, and it was the quickest time that I've ever travelled from the airport to my destination in Los Angeles because no one was on the roads. Um, uh, so, I hope everybody is taking care of themselves, washing their hands, um, looking after the older folk, and looking after each other. I am sending lots and lots of love. Where is everybody? What are you up to? What's going on? You panicking? You're in Sydney. Hey, Sydney. Hey, I think it's important to remember that each and every one of us have um, had our fair shares of extremes in our lives. I think that 1,600... People that are watching this right now. None of us have got off scot-free. <laughs> with our... Um, fair share of turbulence. And here we are. All have survived. Been to Hall and back a few times myself. And survived. Uh, Leonid Bonnie said, I survived the 90s, I'll survive this. Yup. Prayers for Italy. Prayers for everybody. And this is, uh, this is not just an Italian thing or a Chinese thing. Oh, it is an everybody thing right now. Prayers for everybody. Hey, from Burslem. It seems that in England... People are slow to catch on to what's happening. I saw that my dad was at the races yesterday. I was like, oh, why is everybody out? Yeah, bless all the world. How are you? It's like a horror movie, says Paolo7831. Yeah. Yeah. Pilly381 says, we'll be fine, I'm sure. You talks to represent, yeah, that's where my dad was. Rob, Boris said, it's okay, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People are too busy fighting over toilet paper. Mm -hmm. Zombie apocalypse. Isn't it a bit? I've got a tin of beans. I wouldn't say that too loud, Gaza. People be knocking on your door. Joy Brooks says, Robbie, you love a good life. Yeah, I do, yeah. Uh, I do. Helps me to not be bored. Spewing, we missed the donkey magic in Melbourne. I know. I've got all my donkeys set up. I was about to unleash the donkey magic. If nobody's getting the reference that... People ask me in interviews, what can we expect from your show? It's like the most mundane question anybody can ask. So, oh, well, it's my third decade in show business. Probably what I've been doing. So I uh, 
I told them that um, I would be doing donkey magic. <laughs> so I was on the plane. What did I watch? I watched a documentary about Patty Hearst. Now, I don't know if you know about Patty Hearst, but uh, she's from the renowned Hearst family. Like, uh, I don't know, where would they, they be like? Probably one of the first billionaire families in the US. And there was all of these students that were um, had extreme political views in the 60s. And uh, a small bunch of them kidnapped Patty Hearst. Um, Randolph Hearst's granddaughter? Anyway, while she was held captive, she decided to join them. Then she robbed a bank with them. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but it was very, very interesting. That's what I watched on the plane. Ford versus Ferrari. That's good. Uh, it was predicted in 2019 that this would happen in 2019 in a book called Sylvia Brown, The End of Days. Sylvia Brown also predicted hundreds of other things that didn't come true. She actually told a family that was searching for their missing daughter that she was dead when in fact she was alive. I would suggest that if I made 20 predictions today, two or three of them might come true. So I wouldn't put much stock in Sylvia Brown. Um, that being said, online there's this... I don't know, you'll have to check it out yourselves. But there's a book... <laughs> this, is, this, this is interesting, because I, I like weird shit like this. Um, okay, there was a book in 1981 that was, uh, you have to go back 20 months. It was around then a Chinese scientist named Li Shen defected to the United States carrying a diskette record of China's most important and dangerous new biological weapons in a decade. They called the stuff Wuhan 400 because it was developed at the RDNA labs outside of the city of Wuhan. And this was the 400th viable strain of man-made microorganisms, microorganisms created at their research centre. Wuhan 400 is a perfect weapon. It afflicts only human beings. No, one li no other living creature can carry it. And like syphilis, Wuhan 400 can't survive outside a living human body for longer than a minute. That was 1981. Now that's weird. Ah, feed the Pope. Indeed. In these times of mass panic, we should always feed the Pope. Uh, spooky. I know spooky, right? Groove Smith, yes. So that's weird. The Sylvia Brown stuff's like... Mm. Trump is in the final stages of syphilis. <laughs> He's crazy, says Julie Bean. I got tickets for Saturday and my mum, a secret ticket for the concert. We were like, OK, so we have a good news and bad news. We're like, we've got Robbie tickets, but it got cancelled. Oh, bless. OK, so what can we do to keep ourselves entertained? What do you do? I don't really know. don't really know. That's the interesting thing. Who knows what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, and where to go, who to speak to, and who to touch. Who not to touch. Hi, Julie from Norfolk. Out of loo rolls. Are you still going out and about, Rob? Not at the moment, no. Any suggestions from you lovely lot on uh, Instagram Live? What do you do? What to do? BJO Love says, where are you now? I'm in Melbourne. 
I left Melbourne yesterday morning. I'm now in LA. Mass sing-along like they're doing from balconies in Italy. Oh, that's cool. Listen to Robbie music, that's helping me a lot. Oh, bless you. Joe Gilbert says, mate, just eat oat cakes. Poor Julie from Norfolk has had a wedding in Vegas cancelled. Oh, Lord. Uh, Manu Tellerin says, are you depressed, Robbie? No, I'm not depressed, no. No, but I am like the rest of the world going, eh? Voss is das. Voss is dis. <sighs> Who should I call? Saludos desde Venezuela. Netflix and chill. Working nice. And Nantwich Vets. God bless you. Just come home from a party. Everyone was just happy dancing, hugging, just like a big adult pox party. Get it, get it over with. <laughs> there you go. Are those Vegas shows being rescheduled? I'm sure they will be. Please say hello. I've loved you since Take That. Got COPD frightened. Oh, that's cool. Uh... Oh. That is called MASH 0464. Let's have a conversation. Waiting for MASH 0464. It's all right if you don't fancy picking up the phone, but I'm calling you. Can you say something in Spanish? Hola. No. Please reschedule. I've been waiting for so long to see you live. Look, stuff happened yesterday. What are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to know how long this is going to last for? Well, what we're supposed to do, we're just waiting like everybody else. I can assure you this. I will be doing lots more shows. <laughs> when, uh, when this is over. I'm not stopping touring or doing shows. So, yes, anything that isn't happening will be happening. I cancelled my 50th birthday party two months ago because I was strange if I was supposed to be this weekend. Spooky. Wow. <sighs> Let's call you. Go live with BJ Love. Hi. Hi, Robbie. How are you? I'm good. So you cancelled your 50th? Yeah. Because you thought something was in the air, literally. It was, it was just a really bad vibe I had, and I was having these really strange recurring dreams, and it really disturbed me a hell of a lot. And I said, I've just got to cancel it. Just, it doesn't feel right. So what was what was the recurring dream? Oh, um, it was about death, actually. Oh, not your own, was it? Not my own, a family member, actually. Oh, it's, um, those, are, those are traumatic things to have. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. You... So I'm very non-glamorous today. <laughs> Let's, well, listen, I'm, I'm in bed. I have rosacea and uh, I have big bags under my eyes from traveling a long distance, so... Me and you both, mm -hmm. do not worry about it. You look great. Congratulations on reaching that milestone. How does that feel? Thank you. Um, amazing. I mean, it's just a number. 
I mean, I, I think I'm 30. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, it's better than the alternative, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, where are you? I'm in Melbourne. I'm in my home in Kew in Melbourne, and my dog is getting really excited. Ziggy, come say hello. Hey, Ziggy. By the way, I've just had the best time in Melbourne. Oh, it's a great town, great city. It's a, you guys, mm-hmm. you guys have got it so right. The standard of living is incredible. Um, you just feel it in the air. Like the the vibe is a lot different to a lot of places that I go to. Just like people just seem to be more relaxed and more content than a lot of countries that I visit. Oh, look, we have the most, what, an amazing lifestyle here in Melbourne, um, in Australia. We are so fortunate. I mean, I've done lots of travel around the world as well. And we just don't face a lot of the challenges a lot of people have. So it's, we are so fortunate. We're very grateful. What, um, what, what's your job? Um, I work in HR, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, so you, you deal with, with shit storms. Absolutely. Shitstorms and crisis and pandemics, I deal with them. <laughs> All right. So can you do that from home now? I can. I can work from home and I have um, a little a little uh, set up so I can work remotely. That's not a problem at all. So, so I'm you, lucky, actually. So do you have to have sort of like meetings on Skype and FaceTime and all that business? Yeah, absolutely. So we use a lot of um, WebEx um, type of tools um so we all have video hookups and so do you have all, to be do you have to be like like a counselor um oh, look some sometimes you you do fall into being a counselor um but other times it's all about i guess creative uh, problem solving and advising um about risk and and you know just helping people really and I like I, I, li- I, I like your interior design. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yes, I've got some posters and my Venetian masks and things. <laughs> yeah, I like it. The black and white. It's very, very chic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen. Were you coming to the gig? Um, I I was, but um, look, I've, I've seen you each time you come to Melbourne. I always always get along and. Um, I just think you're you're amazing. I love I love your work. Um, oh, bless you! Thank you. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's uh, one of those things. We we love you here in, in Australia, and um, I feel I feel we... very I feel very loved, and I feel very very at home. I um, I feel Australian, which um, I know sounds weird, but it's uh, it's a cool feeling to have. I, I there was like you know. There was talk about not coming down to do the gig, blah, 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 blah. And there would be a few mm-hmm. countries that I'd be like, nah, I'm not going. But it was Australia, so I had to get on the plane. Yeah. Anyway, but, listen, you, know, you take care of yourself. I will. Thank you. Be well. I will. Now wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Bye. bye, darling. Take care. Happy birthday. You too. Bye. You too. Thank bye, you. Bye, 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 bye. bye. Oh, so there you go. Robbie, I love you, says Jack. So London, what's your favourite place in the world? Where's your favourite place to holiday? It's an island called Mystique that I love. In the Caribbean. It's incredible. Small island. Peaceful. My hands are cracking. Lost count of how many times I've washed them. Says a huge Robbie fan. Don't forget to smile. A smile spreads faster than a virus. Pray for Norway, Robbie. Bliss, folks, pray for everyone. <laughs> Get me in, like Rob, lad from Longton. Massive. Oh, Longton. Shally's Laser Dome. Uh, if you had to relocate, where would you like to live? I live in so many places. I'm never in one place long enough to actually consider myself to be a resident or live there. I'm either in Vegas or LA or London or Wiltshire or I'm everywhere. So I guess I'm re- relocating all of the time. 
You're an absolute legend, Robbie. What do you think will happen with the EPL title? Thanks, Jaden. Mate, it's so fucking bizarre, isn't it? You know, the year that Liverpool romp it. So I was thinking when Steven Gerrard slipped, people have got to start talking about curses soon for Liverpool. And um, <laughs> the, the year that Liverpool are romping it, the coronavirus happens. It's going to be very, very interesting. Who knows what will happen? They've got to give it to them, haven't they? Or maybe not. Um, if they don't, Liverpool have got to get rid of that curse. You never age, what's your secret? Oh, I do, don't I? Yeah, I do age. There was a lovely article about me uh, thinning in the newspaper yesterday. Robbie confidently thins. I wasn't aware that I was. <laughs> I wasn't aware. I was neither confident nor aware that I was thinning. So thanks for that article. Uh, now I'm less confident. Hey, Robbie, how was your day, mate? I think this virus is teaching people to wash their hands. I think so, too. Did you watch Barry Amy and Rhapsody? Likes it. Yeah, I did. It was a good film. Do you cleanse? Yes, Lady Horanson, I do. What about show on 24th of Vegas? I'm still hoping to go and see you for the second time. Yeah, good luck with that. I doubt that's happening. How did you get the scar in your head? I um, got pushed into a fountain in the reception of a hotel in Switzerland by Howard Donald. We were all very drunk. And um, I went in head first and split my head open on a rock at the bottom of the um, fountain. By the way, this, this, considering I'm thinning, it's not bad, right? Good night, Robbie. Greets from Rick. Greets, Rick. Rob, see you know Tom Hanks and Rita are in quarantine here on the Gold Coast. Yeah, I know they are, yeah. When were you last in Stoke? I went to watch Port Vale. Three games in a row. Just recently. Get some beef on you, says Patrick Welsh. Is that your way of saying I look thin? Thank you. Night, Paul Harris. Night, mate. Keep on keeping on. Shout out for all the team in Liverpool still working. Big shout out. Okay, right. Have you left Australia? Yes, I have. What's your favourite song you've written or favourite song to sing live? Oh, I don't know. There's been so many of them. I always love singing Angels. That's a boring answer, but... You, mister, absolutely beyond the eyes. So I'm working love in Ministry of Happiness in our country. That's so cool. I don't know what that is, but it sounds great. I work at love in the Ministry of Happiness. Fuck me, that's so great. What a great job title. The Ministry of Happiness. It's a good album title, actually. What are you chomping on? I'm chomping on Nicorette. Stop me from smoking. Okay, let me call one more person. Give me some banter. Tell me something. I'll call you. Don't just say... Me, call me. They don't say me. Who 
<laughs> UK tour or we riot. Are the schools closed in LA? Yes, they are. Bum head. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're a poo face. They say never meet your idol. Wasn't meant to be. I want to talk about Liam Gallagher going gay? Has he gone gay? Good for him. When you come into Stoke, Rob, we miss you. Oh, bless you, mate. Miss you too. I was there recently. So are you self-isolating? Yeah, I am. I'm self-isolating. Jam Jam says Liam Gallagher ain't gay. It would be all right if he was. What's the, what's the problem? My favourite song of yours is Baby Girl Window. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Okay, come on, somebody. Give me some bants. Haven't you been out self-isolating since 2011? <laughs> I'm calling you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hi, mate. Hey, look at us both naked in bed. <laughs> this is uh, well, this is this is just wonderful. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I I love. Uh, I love, I love, <laughs> haven't you been self-isolating since 2011? It's actually 2006. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm a pro at this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, they, they say self-isolate, and I'm like, well, I'm already half there anyway. I've got like, I've got quite a very happy agoraphobia. So it's not like I'm scared of going outside. It's just like, I can't be asked to go outside. So yeah, I'm kind of the same. Like, yeah. How? Where are you? Uh, well, I'm at home. I'm in London. So. And and what what time is it in London? It is something like one. Some gone one in the morning, isn't it? I don't know. What have you been doing? Uh, yeah. What have you been up to? I have been uh, just out and about chilling with friends. Um, me and my girlfriend broke up like last week, so I'm I'm getting back to normality. How long were you going so, out? Six months. It was. Um, it's, yeah, that's it's that's proper. Um, yeah. So uh, just keeping myself busy. I started boxing on Friday night for the first time. It's good, right? It is. My arms hurt a lot. And it is. Um, it's, inc it's incredibly difficult. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, I'm just going for like strength over technique. I'm just building up some strength before I get too into it. But yep. yeah. Mate. Mate, let's not lie. You're gonna go and get body fit for the summer, so you can you can you can swipe right or left to your heart's desire. Well, my my girlfriend who I, who I just split up with, they're actually on, like we're still on pretty good terms actually. But she was my first ever Tinder date, and we were together six months from that first ever Tinder date. Wow, for for Tinder in dog years, that's like a good three or four years that you've been together. Easily, easily. Yeah. So, so when you did the boxing, did you think to yourself, fuck this, I'm not doing this again? Or did you think, no, okay, I, I, I'm in? I, I got there. I went, my cousin's like semi-pro, so he took me to his gym. And I felt like a bit of a twat at first. You know, when you like you feel like the new boy? Yeah. And I was kind of very aware that I was the worst one there, obviously, because I'd only been doing it for three minutes. And uh, I kind of thought, I'm going to go home. And then <laughs> I just... So sort of, I just cracked on and you sort of, once you get past that thing of realising that everyone isn't staring at you and no one gives a shit what you're doing, yeah, well, you're kind of all right. Well, if you could take a pill that gives you the ability to do that, that would be great, wouldn't it? If you yeah, could have like 20 milligrams of, it's okay, no one's I think, watching. <laughs> there, I think there is a pill for that, but I don't think I'm I'll try it. it. I'm on it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what? what's your job? 
So I own a, a company and we sell Doctor Who merchandise at like Comic Con and stuff like that. No way. Um, so do, and... you, do you own the copyright to do that? Right, so we, we don't own the, the copyright. We work with like licensed companies. So like one company has a license for T-shirts. One company has a license for handbags and we communicate with everybody and, and sometimes like we'll design something and get it made through the BBC and stuff. So yeah, it's cool. So you, so you facilitate all of those people coming together to be in one place? Basically, yeah. Uh, and and, so, and is yeah. it just Doctor Who? At the moment, yeah, we've been doing it since we started doing it in November. And uh, so it's pretty new. But we're thinking so, about so, doing stuff like Harry Potter and, you know, general yeah, so, massive franchises. So how did you go from, like, not doing that to doing that? Where did you go? <laughs> um. So, yeah, I've... I, I've done loads of things. I've so I, I've always been kind of like creative. I've uh, done retail jobs and I thought I was working for other people doing basically the same thing, making them rich. And I just sort of thought, well, I might as well yeah, but, do it. But why, <laughs> why did you think Doctor Who? It's one of those things that's it's big, but not massive. It's like if you want to get into something and you want to do well with it, I wouldn't sell phone cases like generic phone cases everyone's doing that yeah. everyone's doing everyone's doing the big stuff harry potter's everywhere doctor who's one of those things that has a big following but not it's not massively like covered so, in terms so of much so what you're saying is you you go in with something that's slightly niche it's obviously not niche because uh that sorry uh, you go in with something slightly niche, but it's not niche because it's Doctor Who. Then you show that you are viable, and then you branch out into Harry Potter, into the Avengers, into whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, exactly. So, and and the cool thing is that most of the companies that have the like rights to do Doctor Who stuff have also licensed everything else that's popular. So once you've kind of established one thing, you can basically go and do anything. Anything. What? How old are you? 25. Wow. So Fearing. did she, did she finish 50. with you or did you finish, did she finish with you or did you finish with her? She finished with me. Big mistake, man. What a big mistake. <laughs> but do you know what? Like where we, we, we've, we said we're not going to text and we've been texting and then we, I sent her a video of me boxing because I've been saying I was going to do it for ages and I was sent it, sent it to her. And then I got drunk this afternoon and got the courage to text her again. And then she said, let's call next week. So um, I've met the family. Are, and you, are, are you getting mixed signals then? I hope she doesn't see this. <laughs> no. The likelihood is she won't. How old is she? She's 22. Yeah, she's not watching a Robbie Williams live. <laughs> do, do, do you know what? Actually, our very first argument, I I wanted her to. Come, I got tickets to see you at the Roundhouse, and, she, and she, she wasn't into it. She it was absolutely pouring down, and we had only just started. Pretty much only just started going out really, and it was raining so much that she was like, "I'm going to go home," and she was like, "I know how much Robbie means to you, so you stay here," and, I, and I'm like. I'm not staying in the queue. Like, I know this test. Like, this is so... Yeah. So, I, yeah, so I, what did you do? I followed her home. Jesus. Oh, so you missed the Roundhouse gig? Yeah. What a cracking gig. There'll be another one, though. There'll be another Under the Radar yeah, gig. Just, hey, you, honestly, it was fucking incredible. But I, I, saw, I saw you did the but, 90s live as well, and I was like, oh. <laughs> but but, but you, you, did, you did the right thing. I stand by doing that, like, still, yeah. like... So, it's, uh... What did you just... Uh, let me just assess. You're not doing that thing where you're being desperate? No, no, like... I'm, I'm doing that thing where... So, a couple of years ago, I went through a breakup that was, like, pretty crap. And uh, then Christmas 2018, lost my mum. And so anything after that is kind of... Uh, nothing's ever going to compare and I've right. grown up a lot. Right. So it's kind of, uh, I feel like I've had the worst thing that's ever going to happen to me. It's already happened. So anything uh -huh. now is kind of, I, if I can cope after like losing my mum, losing your mum, like it was mid conversation on boxing day. With your mum? 
Mm-hmm. She have a heart and attack. She she well, it was a cardiac arrest um, caused by very very aggressive cancer. So we were expecting it, but they told us in November that she was going to pass away. And five weeks, they said she had a few months to live. And five weeks later, she was gone. So yeah, it was a pretty, pretty crap time. I'm really sorry, brother. That's 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 as bad as it can be. And uh, I send you love, and we all send you love right now. Um, <laughs> so the the thing the thing is, you're not okay. So I finished with Ida, right? Mm-hmm. A few times, and what she did was brilliant. No matter how much she wanted to call me, no matter how much she wanted to phone me and ask me why, what's going on, hey, how are you? I think I left something. Blah 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 blah. She didn't, and um, she was the only. She was the only person that no that didn't do that. Didn't do the desperate. So I'm just checking in to make sure that you are not. Reading signs that are not there. No, I mean she. She said to me um, that I think uh, we, we had a good conversation. We had like a really good talk last. No, this Monday just gone. She, um, sorry, Tuesday of last week. She said we're finishing. Let's not talk for a week. Then she contacted me and said to give just to give each other some space. Then she reached out to me six days in and said, where are you? I happened to be one stop away from her on the underground anyway. I was at a friend's house. <laughs> and I was like, okay. well, I'm free now. So she came around. We spent like six, seven hours just on the sofa, like cuddled up, talking and laughing and talking things over. And the kind of general consensus, I think, is that I need to like get over my mum. Like, I think it's caused a lot of anxiety and that comes out in kind of aggression and stuff. Not, not obviously nothing physical, but it just... You know, you kind of wake up on like ninety percent of feeling crap, so it doesn't take a lot to push you. And uh, yeah, well, you'll yeah. be you'll be scared, and you've been traumatized to the nth degree. There can't be any more trauma than what you've experienced. So exactly. the the processing of that is going to take longer than you would want it to, and unfortunately longer than it should do so yeah. and she said to me it's to do with not not loving me she said that she just thinks that we're not good for each other at this moment but she said she wants me to to get better and we're gonna kind of keep in touch because i think she's it's just a pretty special person actually well the great thing is you went boxing so you sort of haven't taken yourself in and isolated you know I did um, that for like two hours. I woke up and I thought, I'm staying in hours, bed today. Two hours is yeah. great. I thought, yeah. I thought, if I'm here, I'm never going to get back up again. Like, I've done that. Well, this the great news is this. You've got a burgeoning, successful uh, business happening by the sounds of it. Maybe not this year, with everything being cancelled, but next year. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it'll be there. It'll be there. And um, you, you're doing the best thing for you. Getting up and getting out is is the biggest and best thing that you could be doing right now. And just the fact yeah. that you you took yourself to boxing, withstood the shame of feeling like you were shit, stayed there and finished it is is a success. So everything and, and that it's you're cool doing... to know that I'm doing it for me as well. Like I gen- genuinely, like for the first time in my life, I'm actually doing stuff for me and not to prove myself to anybody else. Like that's that's right. a good feeling like <laughs> that's fucking great it's fucking great took me a, a lot longer to get to that point than you have <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, met, I, um, I am i'm not sure that i'm still there now anyway listen <laughs> um i get a really good vibe from you you're an incredible person and um i i feel as though um a huge amount of success is coming your way uh you, oh, and you, you. And you're 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 on track to receive it in the right way too. So, be well, look after yourself, uh, you. protect protect your heart. What's left of it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, listen, it's it's all still there. It's just bruised right now, but it will heal. Um, but protect your heart. Put yourself in a self place. Have, um, you know, act as if you have high self-esteem. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's a, it's actually, it sounds silly, but it works. <laughs> it really does. Fake it till you make it. But you know, yeah. what would, what would somebody that loved themselves do in this situation and then apply that? Focus on yourself and then yeah. everything else should come. That's it. Look. Brother, this has been an amazing conversation. I've absolutely loved it. You be well. You be well as well. All right. Take <laughs> care. Mate. Take Cheers. care. Bye. Oh, how cool is that? <sighs> people are beautiful. I love people. So there you go. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, lots of love, everybody. You be well. Wash your hands. Look after your loved ones. Look after each other. Um, we have been through much worse. Take care.